Hi all. This game was between two world champions of the silicon kind. Ribka playing white was playing against Zappa. This match was between um, these two held from the 20th to 27th of September in Mexico where the world championships were being played. This, this computer world championship challenge was also being played. So Ribka is the 2007 world computer champion and Zappa is the champion of 2005 and the vice champion in 2007. Ribka leads every ma major rating list by about 60 ELO and has taken unshared first place in 10 out of 11 major international tournaments in which he participated including the 2007 ICGA World Computer Championship and the 2007 Livingston World Computer Chess 960 Championship. The US International Master Vasek Ralish is the inventor and the main developer so he's been jointly joined by the US International Master Larry Kaufman himself a former computer chess author who had taken over work on Ribka's evaluation function. Zappa is an engine which um, is similar to Deep Blue although much better. It is best known for its parallel speed up so the more cores you can throw at it the stronger it will play. It's competed in many tournaments and its best result comes in 2005 where it took first place with 10.5 out of 11 in the World Championship, the best result in the history of that competition. So it's written by Anthony Cozzi, a PhD student in computer science. And it's rumoured he's one of the uh, people behind Google, in fact. This is a very clever guy. It contains many advanced techniques from the field of AI and parallel programming. On to the game. E4 was played by Ribka. And we have here a Roy Lopez um, with knight f6 being a very solid variation. So a standard Roy Lopez. And so both engines are using their book. Ribka, by the way, is my preferred analytical assistant when I do YouTube videos. Um, so it can spot most of the tactics, which often grandmasters miss. So here we have quite a bit of opening theory being followed and it reminds me actually of a Kasparov Karpov encounter um, where Kasparov was white so white's rook swinging in from a3 um, is aiming for an attack on black's king and black doesn't mind this because of this d3 square being a key square for the knight to, to jump in maybe this knight and, and this knight so we're going to see now that black actually um, sacrifices a pawn now on h6, encouraging um, white to do that because of this domination on d3. So here, black may be slightly better already with this pawn sack because of the positional compensation. So has Ribka gone wrong because of its book slightly? So white actually sacrifice the exchange temporarily and um, in this position we we see white winning black's queen and black gets three pieces for the queen now in this um, kind of strange ending now this is 180 moves this game so I'm gonna do a fast forward soon um, but first, we're going to see that a fortress position was set up where both sides really didn't have much progress. Um, so the two rooks are just moving around at the moment and now you see white's pawns being resolved here and this pawn on h5 now will remain for quite a significant time. But first we see another pawn coming to f5 and now finally look at the pawns they have settled in this situation and we can do a fast forward now and we'll see that nothing changes but what is changing in the background are the fen strings of the engines and the 50 move rule in particular 
is coming up. So we're now on move 99. Now we're on move 104. Now we approach move 108. And here, after rook g f7, white has a comfortable draw just repeating position. Doesn't have to sacrifice the h5 pawn. But Ribka, my analytical assistant, has an Achilles heel which was exposed in this match quite tragically. More tragically because both engines didn't have the table base installed for this particular type of ending. So they couldn't even rely on that. White played an apparently crazy move to avoid the 50 move draw. White sacrificed this pawn unsoundly. And now we see a lot of pressure being put on black's other on white's other pawns, the e pawn is going to drop now. And this starts to be very, very uncomfortable for white, even if black's d pawn goes, as is the case now. So the d pawn is swapped for white's f pawn, but then black picks up the b pawn, and black now has an advantage. White is a sitting duck now with these two pawns against the two rooks and bishop, against ultra-precise play. So you see that e5 is under great pressure now. And black's coordinating those pieces to win first that d-pawn, and now the e-pawn is going to drop. And once that e-pawn drops, this ending is just technique from now on. So Zappa is grinding down my poor analytical assistant who sacrificed that pawn to avoid the 50 move draw would have been fine against normal human opponents but against an engine it would have been better just to have accepted the draw earlier on so here Ribka has mated overall Ribka lost this match to everyone's surprise it was expected to win it Zappa has shown it's a dangerous opponent, especially on parallel hardware, but also there remain some Achilles heels in engines, especially things like the 50 move draw, avoiding them. So um, this was the critical position, and White played h6 here, just trying to um, reset that 50 move draw, because if a pawn moves, then the counter is reset for for when you can declare draw again. There's another 50 moves, which is a 100 play. So, that's um, this game. Um, we we had, uh, in conclusion and summary, we had an, an interesting Roy Lopez kind of system, which uh, looks like a sort of kasparov karpov encounter, with black getting a nice knights on d3. Then we have this exchange this dynamic exchange um, queen for two rooks and bishop which ended up in a sort of fortress position after these pawns became settled but then we see this uh, avoidance of the 50 move draw and white just we have rook D8 mate at the end. I hope you enjoyed that and it's some insight into state of the art engines and um, engines which lead the current rating list. Thanks very much.